الحمد لله الذي ألف بالإسلام بين قلوب المؤمنين وأوجب اتحادا وهرم تفرقا في كتابه المبين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوسكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله تعالى وتعاته قال الله في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله والملائكته وكتبه ورسوله لن نفرق بين أحد من رسوله وقالوا سمعنا وعتعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك مصير that is our praises due to Allah who has united the hearts of the believers with Islam. And he has obligated us to remain united. And he forbids that we become separated in his book, which is most high. We witness that none deserve worship except Allah, who's one alone, 
having no partners, no associates. There's none like or comparable to him. <laughs> and we witnessed that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and his messenger. And what follows of that salutation, I advise you as well as I advise myself to first fear Allah and thereafter be obedient to him. It's recorded in the collection of Muslim that Abdullah said, when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on the Isra, he ascended to Sidratul Muntaha in the sixth heaven, where whatever ascends from the earth ends at, and whatever descends from above it ends at. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was then given three things. The five daily prayers. The last ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. And forgiveness for whomever did not associate anything or anyone with Allah from his ummah. Brothers and sisters, sometimes when we're born Muslims, when we're raised Muslims, we, we, we can't appreciate, and I've said this many times before, when you come into something fresh for the first time. Now, regardless of whether we're born Muslim, raised Muslim, if we're studying the Quran, the Quran is always unfolding to us, always. And inshallah, every year, every time we read the Quran, it's refreshing because we can never exhaust the knowledge of the Quran. We will study the Quran and study the Quran and our grandchildren will study it and our great grandchildren will study it if, as long as Allah does not bring about the conclusion of things. Until Allah brings about the conclusion of things, we will be studying the Quran and the Quran will be refreshed. But something that you may take for granted. Growing up, you, you've heard many times the statement that whomever recites the last two ayah of Baqarah, it's enough. That's enough for him. You've heard this your whole life, many of us. But when you're coming from, mashallah, I was born Muslim, so I never had this issue. But if you once was a polytheist and you come to Tawheed, as I understand it, it's as if one of the biggest veils in your life has been removed. And that veil prevents you from con are coming in contact with the true purpose of life and the true purpose of your life. And so hearing something like this, where he was given three things, right? The last, so first, the five daily prayers. You're born, raised Muslim. Sometimes we don't appreciate the prayer. Sometimes we don't say the five daily prayers. But when people who never had a regular connection 
with God, with Allah in a in a structured manner. They may pray to God when they get in trouble or they may think of God or they may say morning devotionals. But to come into a whole system of prayer. A whole system of prayer that communicates a logic from the very beginning of the Adhan with Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, all the way to Taslim, Assalam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, Assalam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, that there is a logic in it, there is a message in it. Your worship is no longer haphazard. Your worship is no longer, I'm, I'm just. I'm just saying devotionals. No, your worship begins to organize your life. When I was blessed to go on Umrah for the first time, and even that sometimes we take for granted, I was marveled at how the day began with Fajr. That's it. In America, the average person, they don't begin with Fajr. You get up, you, you make your way through Fajr. Half the time, people go to sleep. They go back to sleep. If they didn't get up, right? But it was, it was a marvel to see how that was it. There is no going back to sleep. The, the day began at Fajr. As soon as Fajr was over, we came out, uh, 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 the prophet's messenger, the businesses, the shops start to open up. The you, it's like the birds, like the when the when the day first begins and all of the animals begin to come out of the darkness and and they're moving around and they're scurrying about and and activity in life begins. Not to have anything to structure you, such that before you step into your day, before you begin to wake up. Often we may wake up thinking about the bills. We may wake up thinking about whatever problems we're facing. We may wake up thinking about what's going on with my job, what my boss told me last night, what my supervisor said, a mistake I made in the, in, in, in the night, a problem I have with my wife, a problem I have with my ch with child. You and I, we are woken up out of sleep. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And regardless to whatever your circumstances were when you lay down the night before, regardless to whatever challenges your problems were when you lay down the night before, even if you had a nightmare, if you have recurrent nightmares, right? People they wake up in a in 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 a, in, in, in a stress. They're trying to figure out why I'm having nightmares. Uh, in the logic of our system of prayer is an answer to all of that because when the first thing my conscious mind connects with, not my subconscious mind, as you know, I don't know if you've ever done this. I don't know if you've ever been asleep and something was playing in the background, and then that comes into your dream. Whatever, whatever is in the atmosphere, whatever is in there comes into your dream. Hopefully it's not foul music or hopefully it's not some de deplorable uh, 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 movie or music or something like that. Something whispering uh, bad suggestions to you. No, we begin our, our day. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So, so when, before we become conscious, and as we come out of being unconscious into consciousness, we are reminded that God is great. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's what we're reminded. God is greater. Then, see, you've never woke up calling on something other than God. Calling on something other than Allah. You never did. You woke you, you you from the time you were born, you were calling on Allah. But imagine waking up and calling on something that's not worthy of you calling on. Imagine waking up and calling on something 
on falsehood, something that's not real, that's not true. So, so as we come, as salatu khayru min naum, you know, we add that, right? That's added to the the uh, adhan in the fajr salah. So as we come awake, the first thing we're told, Allahu Akbar. Then, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. As we wake up, we're reminded. We're reminded of this. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. That's what we're reminded of as we're coming out of our sleep. So now, again, you you if some you've never seen it, you may have seen it before. But sometimes when things get real stressful, you call on what's familiar to you. You call on what's most familiar to you. So when you and I get in trouble, we say, yeah, Allah, yeah, Allah, yeah, Allah. I was I was among a group of uh, reverse convert, whatever, whatever language you want to use, who previously practiced another religion. And when things got real tight, their neural pathways that was used to calling on something, it's called a heuristic. It went back to that which they were constantly calling on before they called on Allah. And they uttered the name. Most of us would be like, Shabbat Allah, Mashiach, Stafford Allah, Stafford Allah, Stafford Allah. Well, I knew what was going on. I knew what was going on mentally. So I knew although they called this other name, they weren't consciously trying to worship. This other uh, 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 thing that was taken as a God, it was habitual. But now that you're constantly every morning, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, the more something is repeated to you, the more it begins to change your thinking if you're listening. If you're listening. So it's deprogramming. See, understand that the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, before he came, they were they worshipped idols. They were in, they were deep in idolatry. The whole Kaaba was full with gods. The whole thing was full with, with full with false gods. So that was deep in their psyche. So, so the, 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 the rituals, these things that we say over and over is a form of reprogramming the mind and reprogramming the thinking. We say, ma'am, that's not our problem. Okay, well, what is your problem? Now, you go among the people who were programmed to be servants, they recite those and then recite those things often talks about how you can only be a servant of Allah. You can only be a slave of Allah and nothing else is worthy of you giving your service to. You go among a group of people who were into interest and in inflated interest, they may commonly recite those I am the Quran that talk about the evils of Rida. So whatever your challenge is, know that the Quran has a system to address it. You and I just have to engage it so. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Every morning, every morning. Then after you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, reminding you, that as you are constantly bombarded with things in your day-to-day -day life that invite you to worship things other than Allah, la ilaha illallah is constantly reinforced to you. Those are need to be changed. I don't know exactly. I think you push them down, I think. But we need the fans a little bit 
uh, a little bit. Uh, I can see people are getting hot. See, when you get, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think that's it. And people get hot, they get sleepy. They begin, and I'm not saying that to make you, because remember I told you, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable when you make noise and things like that. So, 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 so that's not why I'm saying that. So then right after that, see, you're coming out. Some people come out of bed thinking about bacon and eggs, hash browns, orange juice, pancakes, syrup, waffles. You might come out that too, but no, you got first, no. This can, this can sound funny to you, but Allah is greater than breakfast. No matter how good it is. But breakfast is only symbolic of your appetite. So Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. What? Can y'all move up, please? Y'all move up. It's getting a little, uh, the crowd is getting a little um, large. So y'all please move up, inshallah. <laughs> And as you're moving those things in back, please don't encroach upon the space of the sisters. We have to make room for them so that they'll come to Juma. If we don't make room to them, they'll go someplace else, then we'll be complaining. But a woman won't come to Juma. Well, that's because you ran them out Juma. So if you don't run them out of Juma, inshallah, they'll, they'll come. And if you make more space for them, they'll come. And so all of us are experiencing challenges with our daughters and our nieces. And our and, and, and our and our our aunts and, and this society is constantly bombarding the minds. And now and I understand it was not quite but in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they did not have smartphones. They did not have the shaitan constantly coming to them. every second of their life. You have the shaitan in your life. You don't even have to leave the house. All you need is a cell phone and Shaitan can constantly visit you. So although we're not at liberty to change that as, a, as an experienced person, I think one of the most important things today is for women to come and hear the Quran and be deconditioned and deprogramming to all of the programming they get all week long in the world. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Well, you know, I'm only human. Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Yes, you're only human. But God gave you a human as an example. And if you study his life, he was born in the bastion of idolatry and then succumbed to it. He was born in a, in, a, in a den of corruption and didn't come to it. He lived, he had struggles in his life and challenges in his life that far outstrip anything that you and I are facing in our life. So before we get out of bed, we are reminded that God is only thing worthy of worship except nothing's worthy of worship except God and that he sent you a human being to, mo to model your life for you. So no matter how challenging your life is, the fact that God sent a human being as a model for you means you can get up and face the challenges of your day. <clears throat> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een amma ba'ada dear beloved Muslims So you're about to begin your day You're reminded Allah is greater, Allah is greater There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. We bear witness. And not, you're not just reminded, you're bear witnessing. Can y'all move up some more? I know it's hard. It's, it's, it's very, very full. It's very full. 
and uh, we want to make room. And I'm going to ask the brothers, there may not be a wall back there, but they'll have to act like this wall back there. And don't behind the one, please, inshallah, move up. Then, after reminded there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, what are you told? Hayya! Hayya! Ala salat! Get up now! <laughs> Get up! Hayya! Get up! You've been asleep long enough. You had enough sleep. Now it's time to get up and go to work. It's time to get up and get busy. Hayya ala salat. Come alive to what? Devotional worship. Begin your day with devotional worship. Then that sets the tone for your whole day. You can go to a conference and you can pay somebody $2,500, $5,000 to teach you the habits of highly successful people. And they can spat out to you theories of human development and human behavior. And they can tell you, start off your day with positive affirmations. Start off your every day with positive affirmations. Start off your every day thinking how positive your day is going to be. Decide that your day is going to be successful. They're 1,400 years late. They're 1,400 years late. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us that 1,400 years ago. And he didn't make you come, spend $5,000 to come to a weekend seminar to be told how to make yourself better. Allah gave it, Allah gave it to you. And he gave you the motto in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Come lively to prayer. Hayya ala al falah. Hayya ala al falah. And start cultivating yourself. Get up and start cultivating your soul. You are a garden. You have a, you're like a potential garden. So don't get up and the first thing you start doing is throwing trash in your garden. You get out of bed and start, start throwing bad seeds in your garden. Start, start throwing toxic waste in your garden. That's going to kill your garden. No. When you get up, use the tools that Allah has given you to cultivate your garden. Use that and go to work. And so that you and I wouldn't forget it. Is left to us as far. It's left to us as a as an obligation. Now you know how this goes, right? Some people are gonna do it all. There's two ends of the spectrum. Some people are gonna pray every far prayer, they're gonna make every sunnah, they're gonna pray all of them, they're gonna get up, pray to Hajj, uh, uh, they're gonna pray duha, they're gonna do all these things. Consistently, they're, they're not going to go to sleep at night without praying with them. Then, then on this side, you got the brothers and sisters that listen. I'm just going to do the five. As long as I get the five, then I'm good. So you have every spectrum. So God made it an obligation because you know if the five wasn't obligatory, you wouldn't do all five. Some people would do it. But if the five wasn't an obligation, if Fajr wasn't an obligation, you wouldn't do it. I'm going to end with this, but Sujad, the crazy, the crazy, the crazy person who came to claim that to be a prophet, she was a woman. And then Musaylim of the liar, right? They, 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 they were, they, they, they were getting married. If you don't know this history, you're like, what is the man talking about? The, the, don't get lost on the story. The point I'm going to make. So, so Musaylima, who was claiming to be a prophet, for a dowry, he told Suja that her, that as his dowry, like you and I, we get 10000 15000 100 depending on how, how, how much uh, paper you got, right? So we give our wife gold, jewelry, rings. So, uh, Musaylima, the false prophet, 
told Suja, um, my dowry to you is your followers don't have to pray Fajr and Isha. That's how crazy they were. But that will let you know the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't even gone that long. And they were trying to decrease the fard. Now, these guys weren't Muslim. Okay? But my point is, if it wasn't obligatory, we wouldn't do it. So God made it obligatory. So inshallah, we grow past the point that we do it only because it's obligatory. But as long as it's obligatory, at least we'll do it. <laughs> this is the beginning of the last two ayah of Baqarah, which was unbelievable reveal the prophet, and he believed in everything Allah revealed to him to do to manage life. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Allah, give us the good of this life and the good of the next and protect us from the torment of the fire. Please help all of our actions that we don't act according to our own will, but that we act according to your guidance. Increase our knowledge of the Quran. Increase our knowledge of the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Increase our love for you. Increase our love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and grow love and affection in the heart of the Ummah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin. Amin. Allah 
أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبض ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور أمن هذا الذي يرزق من أمسك رزقه بل لجوا في عتو ونفور أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه أهدا أمن يمشي سويا على صراط مستقيم قل هو الرحمن ومن به وعليه توكلنا فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم 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 السلام علي